Hello friends. Welcome to the Cannes Yachting Festival at the Côte d'Azur, France. Today we have a very interesting boat review. One we've all been waiting for for a long time. The Aura 51. We've had a little delay with this review. This is not first review of Aura 51, but the first review of this boat with an electric propulsion system. So I hope you'll find this very interesting. Let's go. I'm your guide, Sasha Gorin, and with Interparu's channel, and today we'll be reviewing the Aura 51 Catamaran in the Funtan Pajo. Let's go check it out. Okay. The Aura 51 or Aura 51 is the very long-awaited successor to the Saba 50. The time gap between the boats left a large number of orders being placed with a high degree of expectations. Let's start with the boat's general characteristics. The hull is 15.5 meters long, with a beam of 8 meters and she displaces 18 dry tons. With that said, I can't say she's a light boat, but in comparison to the heavier competition, the boat is expected to be nimble enough. Now if we look at the sail to weight ratio, the main sail is at 95 square meters and the Genoa at almost 60 square meters. So with a combined amount of 154 square meters of sails for this 18 dry ton vessel, of course, we're still loading, so only after we'll be able to know a more accurate sail to weight ratio. Like all catamarans coming out of Funtan Pajo, this yacht can be equipped with an electric platform option that can go underwater and can also accommodate a dinghy. This boat can be equipped with the double 60 horsepower Volvo Pentas engine or the dual 75 horsepower Yanmar engine. But the boat is based on electric motors. Come on, I'll show you. Traditionally we start the review with the transoms, there's no big surprises here. Many ask what optional or extra cleats look like, so here they are. In this case, the owner wanted the deck to be covered in a natural teak wood. Here we have two fittings, an outlet and inlet for water, one fresh and one out which we'd use to wash the deck or other parts of the boat. There's also a connection for shore facilities. But that's not the most interesting thing here. Let's not pull the cat by its tail and have a look and see what's there.
Well, there's nothing really here guys, it's absolutely empty, but not completely. We can see the battery. We see a lithium ferrum polymer battery since we all know that lithium ion batteries have had burnout problems. But, the shipyard has said this battery is more secure and reliable. So let's trust in them. We'll see. Where's our engine? We don't have an onboard motor. But actually an outboard motor. Literally the motor is outside and in the water, so it's quite good. So what advantages do we have by having it this way? First, it cools down and second there's no audible sound. But in reality it's not silent, it emits ultrasound. Feedback from some electric yachts and boats as the ultrasound waves from the motor affect people's nerves. It's said to be irritating and increase nervousness. Therefore an overboard engine is quite good and even the big ocean liners prefer it as well. Did you know, these huge ocean liners such as the Oasis of the Seas, have its spinning outboard motor. Let's speak about the electricity on this boat. We have two batteries on board, that power the motors independently. We have standard, 21 kilowatt hour batteries, which can be expanded, to 27 kilowatts hours. The motors that are outside are AZI pods and they can also produce electricity. These engines can work as hydro generators. This means, as you sail, they will generate electricity. According to the shipyard, these electric motors can generate 1 kilowatt hour each, at a speed of 5 knots. And 1.5 kilowatt hours at 7 knots. On transatlantic trips, you can estimate you'll get around 30 to 35 kilowatts of electricity for each engine and that's quite good. Funtan Pajo has tried for a long time to launch something electric. They had the Lucia 40, an electric catamaran, which sailed for a long time back and forth from La Rochelle and was equipped with Ocean Volt engines, which already belonged to Volvo Penta. They tried persistently, but something went wrong, so they used these engines. Now Funtan Pajo bought company, since they already produced electric engines for commercial water transport. In La Rochelle, we have Bouze de Mer which are catamarans that are powered by solar panels and are called Bouze de Mer. They have a very valuable resource because they operate from morning to evening. The Funtan Pajo shipyard bought this company and used these engines. You must understand that Funtan Pajo is very serious in this case. And, looking forward, in addition to the 51st electric model, the 59th model is also being prepared with, the 45th and 67th model are planned to have an electric base, therefore, it shows their serious intent and this is not just a marketing gesture. We'll see. I think I've said enough about the propulsion plant. Finally, I'll mention, this is not a purely electric catamaran. There's also a 32 kilowatts diesel generator on board to power the batteries. According to shipyard statements, this boat can sail for six hours. The engine power reaches 27 kilowatts, which is converted into 36 horsepower. But the horsepower here may be a little different because the kilowatts are slightly different, according to the shipyard statements. There is a half limiter here, which means not all of the 27 kilowatts used, but half. The engine will operate smoothly, but if you completely sink the handles and apply full power, and as it builds up, it gets reset to prevent the engines from overheating for greater autonomy. 
It's similar to diesel engines and internal combustion engines. That's why it's programmed in this way. I hope you understood that all. Let's talk a little more about the benefits of a hybrid power plant. You can also use the water maker powered from the battery because you have a 6 kilowatt inverter. You're able to use the air conditioning to control the climate, but there are some restrictions only in night mode. In economy mode, you run it step by step. You won't hear the generator rumbling then. Here are time limits to 6 to 8 hours. But, again, in the night it is quite enough. That is, the air conditioner will work in economy mode to cool and dehumidify the cabins. That's a plus. I think that's enough for the technical characteristics and numbers. Let's switch to the comfort aspects, because there are some things to show here. Let's close our engine compartment without a motor. What's next? There is something interesting in the cockpit and the Funtan Pajo DNA is clearly recognizable. Some elements here are taken from other boats that have already worked out well, and rightly so. There's a large number of lockers and under this seat there's a locker. In this seat there's a locker and in the deck we also have a locker. Here we can see a missing locker. In this lying place. Because this is part the ceiling of the aft cabin. Well. Behind me you'll see the grill with an absolutely standard plinth. It's used on the 42nd, 47th on 45th models with absolutely the same detail that you saw before. For some of our clients we install a Weber here. Some are fans of the Weber brand for some reason. So we install them instead of the pedestal. This is where we install the Weber grill. Here, we can see the speakers below and it's not the best solution because they can get wet from the inside and it's not the best place for sound production. We installed separate good speakers, namely low speakers. Therefore, music lovers, connoisseurs, and melomans, this solution is not the best. Under my feet, there's an empty second engine compartment that's identical to the other. Here we have two winches for the downwind sails, like Jenniker or Spinnaker. And on the other side we have the entrance to the master cabin and I must say that this is the maestro version of the master cabin. Recently Funtan Pajo started to make the master cabins on the port side. Here we have an entrance to the master cabin and the guest cabin. If you're chartering the boat, you'll have separate entrances to the guest cabins. Let's take a look at the guest cabin. Well, here we have a two-bed cabin with a very interesting solution by having a sofa. It's such a cozy place and yes, you can climb in only from this side here. Let's take a look at our bathroom. It is quite a sufficient and viable size. What do we have here? Buttons with a designation on them. Now we have pictograms on the buttons. Before you just had to guess when you want to turn something on at night, there could have been a surprise. Automatic fire extinguishing system with an additional input for another fire extinguisher. Well, I already foresee clients will ask to expand the wardrobes so that someone could hang something here like their clothes. I feel confident, especially for girls in this cabin. That's how it is. Let's move on. We have gas cylinders right here under this seat. That can fit two gas bottles. And here, a kind of imperceptible maneuver. We do seep into the salon. And why? Because of such detail the galley smoothly passes to the salon thanks to this detail and to this unrealistically huge opening. Well, the border between the saloon and the cockpit. That's it.
cabooses grow in size. All manufacturers of yachts and catamarans follow the same motto, more galleys, let them be nice and better. Why? Because it's important when you're relaxing at sea on a yacht, you discover such feelings, the gourmet senses, it makes you want to cook something interesting and tasty. Therefore, every yachtsman is a chef, but not every chef is a yachtsman, dear friends. Think about that. So, what about this kitchen cabinet? Here we can place an ice maker. Company can install a good ice maker here for you, and it will be little bit in the shade so it won't overheat. And we place additional waterproof sockets inside, and you will have a perfect power sockets for some additional equipment, like a coffee machine. A beer keg also could be placed here. One client from Moldova have asked me to create a place for a barrel of wine, and we were quite ready to do it. I like it, it can be used in any way, for any purpose. It only takes a little bit of improvement from our Interparus team. And this is a very good and necessary thing. Here are some sunbeds. Yes, we have sunbeds and windshield here, which are so similar to what we have at the flagship class, on the Samana 59 and the Alegria 67. On big catamarans they proved themselves quite well, this windbreaker, therefore in a convenient lying place. Let's go back to our galley. The galley here is really huge with a very well and intelligent design. Unlike Saba 50, this island was moved here and they did it absolutely right, because we saved a lot of space here. You could rest with your booty here, so we got comfortable. Here is very a convenient drawer. In general I why think this is the most important drawer here. We've put a sink and a gas stove here. In principle it always was at hand. If it was placed further, it wouldn't be the same. Why was it cut off in depth? Well, because we have cabinets on the other side, that is completely and integrally used. Maybe a little further away is the trash bin but there were no other options to place it here. And we have a big wash on this side. Although I'd select a smaller one. But, in fact, they decided so. We have a seawater pump here. I don't really know why we need it on the catamaran equipped with water maker. Here we have such a locker usually having microwave here. But if you're a healthy food lover, then this closet is completely appropriate. On top, there's still some space for bakery products. These things were inherited from previous yachts because they had proven themselves quite well and are convenient. So these shelves are more developed and segmented, which I think is good. A good gas range but many clients ask to change it to a combined gas induction stove, arguing for it to be more independent and not to burn gas in the marina in order to not emit excessive amounts of CO2. We are all for the ecology. See? The gas oven here can be changed to electric. Above the cooking surface there's a very important a hatch, where earlier everyone asked about it. Currently the shipyard arranges it on almost every boat. Another small drawer which makes it a very necessary and useful and pleasant trifle. Let's go back to our little island. Here we have a locker and here, a refrigerator. The refrigerator is optional. Oh, sorry, it is also a freezer. The freezer is optional and you can order it according to your taste. We also have standard refrigerators here that have two drawers, with a glass bottom. I like these refrigerators more than the usual ones that are for home use. Why? These refrigerators hold the cold better. You can ask professional restaurateurs about it. Next, they're fixed in so nothing would fall out when the boat is on the big waves. If you buy a yacht to be a simple houseboat, or as a motorboat, the usual refrigerators can be used. 
But if you have a sailing yacht or catamaran you'd still want to go sailing. So, you'll need such special refrigerators for the yacht. Also, they don't take away from your panoramic view space, which is very important for the good boat. That's it. That's why I like these refrigerators. The only thing I dislike are the handles. We must do something with this. Maybe we'll make some kind of simple overlay for our clients. Basically this fridge is better in my subjective opinion. Going further. On top of the refrigerators, we continue the galley. The kitchen here is just incredible, guys, trust me. And, again. It's also covered with Corian, which is artificial stone. Well, here you can place all kinds of equipment, we again have storage facilities with. That's good. What is missing, is that there's not enough sockets. On each boat clients ask for our technicians to install additional sockets. Here I can see the same, you just will need more sockets, and we can install them for you. Okay, the Bose speaker system is also well secured, but we can sometimes install the focals that are very reliably attached. From above, it's not that somebody doesn't steal, but sometimes a simple hand motion can unintentionally demolish an attached structure. This little speaker could hurt it a lot, see? Well let's go on further along our salon, and here our galley can convert into quite a cozy lounge area. It's interesting for me, just like this fragment here that I like very much. And also this one. It's so cozy since it's upholstered in leather, well, it could have been also natural. Here is a place for an iPad. And what do we have here? A place for mobile phones, it's still very good but again no outlet. We could put an outlet here for you, well. Oh damn. And at the same time we could put a shock absorber so you won't hear such a big, boom. The light bulb is close to being dead, so it would be better to arrange a good Italian lamp from Foresti and Swarti. So contact Interparus who are always at your disposal. Still generally it's quite very cool, you can lie resting like this. On previous versions there was a navigator's place here, but now it is useless so it moved to another place, and here you can actually control the yacht, guys, yeah that's right. You can actually control the yacht from the iPad. And what do we have here? Ah. Yes another storage locker for any useful tools. Besides we have storage lockers here on our deck. One, two, three, four and five. There's so many, well at least they are dry. To open it, we use a suction cup, but, again, sometimes clients ask us to install a handle here. See, a very nice and neat handle. Here there's just a passageway to the cabins, nothing remarkable here. Fontaine did the right thing and covered the whole area with plastic. At this chic porthole window, sometimes water overflows. Now this is how it is done on the latest models, and it's right. Okay, we can test out this chic porthole separately, dear friends. Voila! Great ventilation for communication with the bow and cockpit. You can even transfer cocktails right through there. Well, this is an excellent solution, I like it. Here we have a passage to the guest cabins, we'll go over there later. Let's finish with the salon. And here we have such a sofa area, we have a coffee table, it's a standard solution we offer, but the design changed a little bit. But, again, here we can place a normal lifting table and turn this part into bed, it's all possible. Here we have table, and in this we can arrange a cellar for good French wine. I think it is a perfect place. Here we have such nice niche, it really suits me and I like it very much. Again, here we have a TV but in a controversial place. Yes, it spins. 
but in fact it can be viewed only from this sofa. I will think of something else, maybe another solution for the TV. I don't, but I would have placed it differently. I like right here just in this cozy place, which makes it childishly attractive. Here we can place our iPads, magazines or books. They can be right at hand. There is a backlight, which you can see that's very gallantly done. Fusion is everyone's favorite. Well, at least the latest model, I think they should have added a little bit better sound quality. And what do we have below? Here there's another drawer where there's a, a subwoofer when you lie down it pulls you up. And here, my friends, is all that remains of the navigation table. I already foresee a howl in the swamps, where stern skippers and sailors would live. Anyway, they howl, but the caravan moves on. All that is left of the navigational table has been reduced as much as possible. We have control of our puck here. Here is Schieber system control, a Garmin speaker, main VHF station, and a 9-inch Garmin chart plotter as well as our electrical system management to we see what and where we are charging, and the emergency breakers. And it also has a set of USB sockets. They brought the ice switch here, so don't be confused when the silent mode is enabled. And here we have a drawer big enough for our charts, if anyone else likes using them. Sincerely, I do use them sometimes. There is a nightstand. As a matter of fact, I like everything. We've reached the edge of our vast salon. It's really huge. And the ergonomics and well, strong point of the Funtan Pajo shipyard. As I have mentioned this before in my other videos, that Funtan Pajo catamarans is designed by a husband and wife, resulting in such a beautiful interior and exterior of the boats. Now, Let's go to the master cabin. So, our master cabin, we have on the port side with a guest cabin in the front, we will go there a little bit later. Right at the entrance is our sanitary unit, seems interesting enough. We have a shower on my left hand, here, I would put the teak grate down. Also as to the shower, I would change it, and we have some shelves here but it's the tuner's soul that cries in me now. And separately here, look at the toilet. It's compactly placed, but still there's enough space. Well, basically it's okay. I do not find any negatives. What do we have here? There's many closets here. There is a lot of space in the closets and wardrobes to keep evening dresses, but I can already see what solutions can be thought of. Here are the closets, cabinets, the shelf here, it is not clear what may be to screw onto a figurine. This one retractable. It is not clear why the drawer is so small. Maybe a small jar. We don't have a table here. Well, I don't know. I need a woman's opinion. There is no dressing table. Here's the bed. Again, this is one of many layout options. Here, we'll show you. Look, there's such a version of Maestro 1. We call it Double Maestro. It's very interesting. Well, maybe you won't see it anywhere else. Look. There's two master cabins and two guest cabins here that are closer to the nose. Then we have Maestro 2. We call it Full Maestro, where the whole hull is a master cabin with a huge bathroom. And on the starboard side we have three cabins. As we will see here, Maestro 3 in fact, is such an ordinary master version where we are now. Here we see a normal-sized master cabin on the port side, that is in the port float. 
and the guest room in the bow, and on the starboard. We have three cabins here. Here we are looking at this version. And finally, the final version is a six cabin configuration. I can't imagine six cabins in this size but they are almost identical. But the furniture in the cabins differ in ladders, that's why there are drawers, but there are no drawers in the cabin. Basically they're almost symmetrical cabins. These versions are offered to us by Funtan Pajo on the Catamaran Aura 51. And the traditional window in front of the bed is a good thing. But, look at the hooks now. Funtan Pajo have rubberized them, so if you hit it, nothing bad will happen. I don't quite understand the purpose of this light bulb here. I think it's for reading a volume of Tara's Shevchenko. So, I do not understand I think, you shouldn't read a volume of Tara's Grigorovich Shevchenko, in this position probably, so I think it's necessary to change it. Queen size bed is 2 meters by 1.6. On Aura 51 it's not the king size, like on the Flemish models. Again a large number of small cabinets. There is a big pull out under the bed. There's a large number of various sized drawers. As you can see, and the telly is here positioned. Initially, it's not quite convenient, but if you extend the pantograph holder, I think it's quite convenient to look at. And most important thing, access to the cockpit. You can go out in the morning through this beautiful door. Go swim in the turquoise seawater and then rinse yourself with the deck shower and go back to the bed and sleep again. Ah, and the fire extinguisher is under the stairs. Okay, it's all here now. So, now we have a forward cabin here for our review. We're in a bit of a hurry because the exhibition has already started and people also want to see this beautiful boat. So, we have a bow cabin here on the port side and they're symmetrical. It has the same bed as in master cabin, with the soft headboard. I really like it. We face no surprises. There is a drawer. There is a locker right here. I like this. Well, a shower with a toilet. For the bow cabin, it's not bad. There's a two-in-one toilet room here. And, again the same cabin is located on the other side, that is two symmetrical cabins. Now let's move on to starboard and see what's interesting there. So now we've moved on the right float in the right hull and here is the midship cabin. The entrance is only from one side, well, guys, the fee for three cabins in one float. The bed size is sufficient, but you only have one entrance. How important is this to your guests? That's a question you must decide on your own. Well, the height is sufficient, you can't reject that, and we have probably a normal size closet here. Well actually a wardrobe. What else do we have with the storages? A retractable box down here, that's all. Well, I think there will be requests to place additional storage drawers in this cabin. What about our bathroom? I like the size. It looks quite roomy. Very nice. Okay. Does this mean there's a space for placing some kind of locker? Just like in the aft cabin, we have a nice roomy storage for bed linen. By the way it's already possible to arrange some kind of sofa here to render some extra coziness. But for sure, we can sew pillows for you to sit on and read. So, let's go to the starboard forward cabin and briefly take a look, because they're actually the same. Yes, just looking in with one eye to the starboard cabin. It's absolutely identical to the port side, with the exact same bathroom. And that's it. 
The same cabinets also. Let's go see something else. So, the steering post. Nothing to be surprised with here. But we have a good seating for three people and behold. The post itself is a little more ergonomic. It's kind of nice, right? The autopilot control panel has been moved to the right hand side, with a cup holder and a shelf for the phone so it won't fall. Look what kind of throttles we have, the throttle controls. Well, there's no more classic gas. Just a nice joystick from a good computer game. Yes, it's fun to drive. By the way, I've had experience driving electric catamarans. It's very interesting. Here's a very light catamaran. And it was very nice to drive. Just like in the computer game. Well. So here, guys again, there's the control panel for our entire electrical system and a chart plotter. But I would put a bigger chart plotter here, because on this boat it is quite too small. Well, Garmin, damn it. Well, if you want it for private use, you better take Raymarine. We install Raymarine for our clients that request it. The steering wheel here is not carbon fiber, it's plastic. I think a plastic steering wheel is a good thing. I think that it's very, very ergonomic here. And even more for my clients, I will make such an armrest, a pleasant thing. There's three places here with a wonderful view. The visibility are great, I think Funtan Pajo is ahead of the rest. Both catamaran bows are seen from here perfectly. I see the starboard transom and it is easy to operate in this position. So, if you moor the stern you can stand like this, and easily see the transom of the starboard side, but also you can to control the transom of the port side. Voila! Dear friends, what else should I attract your attention to? Look down here. Do you see? Starting with the Tana 47, they began to make such a great, because there are a lot of roofs that are large. We know. During the rain, the water overflow merged to go down here. Airy correct and very sensibly done. On to the winches. Also nothing new if you owned a Funtan Pajo and switched to another Funtan Pajo, then everything is clear here. All three winches, everything is brought. The wiring is all here under the roof. You control the sheet boom, a done winch here. E have one. Ah, two, sorry. These are two electric winches, one at the base, the second for a surcharge for the Genoa winch and jib winch. Okay, now let's go to our flybridge. Well, not the flybridge, but the sun deck. Let's evaluate it. A huge flybridge. A huge sun deck and I definitely suggest a table. I will offer for my clients to place a table here and cover it with teak, cork, or a synthetic teak, if you wish. We have huge chic sofas here where you can lie down and sunbathe while at the same time can arrange cocktail parties. The boom is low accordingly we can easily operate the mainsail and put it in a lazy bag, here. Why is this sun deck and not the flybridge larger? Our boom is low. Don't forget guys. This is a sailing yacht and this boat still sails quite well for a cruiser. It has a low center of sail. This is a safety parameter too. One point of safety is, it has more windage, to make this boat feel more confident under sail. Right here we already see solar panels. Yeah solar panels, we have them everywhere. These are flexible solar panels, you can even walk on them. The shipyard made a miscalculation and installed panels for 2 kilowatts. They believe that during the day these panels will be enough to fill the accumulators that we have on board. Furthermore, look at the stern, 
They even removed the places for hard, rigid solar panels, and left only these flexi panels. That is how they made it. Here we have excellent sofas, two mattresses in front of the two cedar ones. And as a matter of fact, that's all. Let's switch over to evaluate the bow cockpit and see interesting things that are here. Let's go. Okay. We finally reached the frontal cockpit of Aura 51. Here we have such semi-sofa half mattresses you already know. The back rises and falls, as you can see, and it creates additional comfort, so you can seat or lie down here. I can back quote T get why the owner didn't cover this part with teak. It would give comfort. Since it's a commonly used, there will be more scuffs on white here. But on teak it would be a bit more pleasant looking. It's also worth saying that under our feet here is the same 32 kilowatt diesel generator and this is how it looks. So, this is a huge locker where you could hide whatever you'd want. Yes, this is a winch cover that can also be used as a table. The anchor winch is here. It seems to me, a quick, I don't know its power. But, sometimes we install a more powerful one for our clients. We also have a lot of space in the forepeak, where you can organize a skipper cabin, one or two of them if you need. You have enough space. And here the traditional bow seats. They are present on almost every Funtan Peugeot sailing catamaran. And here is our favorite trampoline netting. You see, this boat is equipped with a bowsprit and it has also full Jenniker equipment. For better sailing experience you can add the electric twist to your order. The motor is located directly under forestay, it is a more reliable one and works without ropes. Perfect for single-handed sailing. Well, friends, here you see an anchor. The shipyard has slightly improved the rollers, now we can use here anchor with a yoke. That's good. What do we have here? Arachna, a mantis. You can put any anchor here, generally. Okay, my dear sailors, from here you can see. The bow cockpit is quite simple with a large area of space that can easily accommodate about four to five people. I think it is exactly what people expect to have on 51 feet catamaran. Well, friends, this is what an electric sailing catamaran from Fontaine Pajo Aura 51 looks like. I think you liked it. I will say that we have a more objective opinion already when we get feedback from private usage, but it is far from one or two boats but much more. Only then we can talk about something more confidently. Meanwhile, I believe that we have enthusiasts now and namely the enthusiasts must promote this yacht to all the masses. Oh we invite enthusiasts to us in La Rochelle, if you like this yacht in its electric version or with classic diesels. I will be happy to help you with the purchase, registration and training as well as any issues that may arise that are associated with the purchase and operation of the yacht. I'm Sasha Gorin from the Interparus team. Please find my contacts below to write and call us. Ukraine will win. Glory to the heroes. See you at sea. Bye.